Good afternoon everyone. Professor Pandurangan has been teaching courses on algorithms, data structures, discrete mathematics, cryptography etc for the past 36 years at IIT Madras. This is all about Professor Pandurangan in a single sentence as per his suggestions. Professor Pandurangan will now speak on the topic mathematics for IIT. Thank you. So thank you very much uh, for arranging my uh, talk uh, post lunch, first talk. Usually after such a heavy meal people will be in a slightly higher plane, more philosophical. So I won't get hard questions. That's why I love this session. So I love this session because I won't get the hard questions at all. The second thing is, yes. Yeah. Post lunch, we had the maximum turnout of 130. So. Oh, no, the turnout is okay. It's a very cozy, comfortable place for me to receive questions. <laughs> so, also I decided the following. In any duel, you know, the guy who gives the first blow has some advantage. So, what I'm going to do is that before you start asking questions, I'm going to start asking questions. So I am going to uh, start with certain questions. It says mathematics uh, uh, for uh, IT. Okay, have you understood uh, all the uh, words here? Okay. Information technology. What is information? Deafening silence, right? <laughs> Did I ask any irrelevant question here? <laughs> Go ahead guys. What is information? Attempt. Data. Exactly I am waiting for this moment. I want you to shoot on your legs. You <laughs> did it. It's great. I am delighted that what is data? <laughs> Tell me what is data? Data is unprocessed information. Information is processed data. <laughs> Guys, wake up. Right? Enough of your lunch post effect. Okay, so first of all, what is important is we may have nodding acquaintance with many things, but we really, really don't go deep and understand what exactly is that and so on. And when we do not know that, obviously anything related to that, everything will be at a surface level and hence we never get to go to that deeper appreciation. Therefore, let us start with the question on what is information. Then only you will know what is information technology and only then you would know what mathematics can do for this, right? If I don't even know what information is, how do I know or judge what math is going to do for what? It's information, right? So let's uh, uh, begin at the beginning, okay, boom, big bang, right, universe, God has created nature and you have mother nature and we have the following entities currently available human and uh, objects okay physical world chair table trees river okay jailalitha everything around okay <laughs> dead live i am really afraid of that lady so <laughs> let me be honest i must use her name in wherever i teach so uh, <clears throat> so the, we have everything uh, around. So we have human. Hey, by the way, what do you mean? Uh, do you know the meaning of the word human? That has a meaning. It's not simply a label for uh, 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 living creature. What is the meaning of the word human? Man. This is another thing. We are using the word so much, but we really don't understand what that means. Okay, man, manushya, man, in Tamil, manudal, man is the root word, it means to think. Our race is named after one of the fundamental and basic traits that we have called thinking. Okay, it is a mental activity. How it is happening and then what exactly is uh, happening here, what kind of neuron trigger, we may have all kinds of models, but then we really don't understand what it is all about. But we do think, we act, we recognize that, okay, we emote, we react, okay, we create poems, we solve problems, okay, and we do a lot of things. So, we do think. Animals also think, okay, they strategize. 
Okay, you think that you are the master of distributed computing? Definitely not. Tigers, they gang up and then they strategize among themselves, communicate beautifully and then attack a deer. Four tigers are beautifully coordinating, then attacking them. This is all done long back by mother nature. Okay, we give some new names for that, a new abbreviation. We are very fond of that. And we create some technical jargons and names for that, but it is happening. Okay, so what is happening is we think and what exactly we mean by thinking you react to your physical experience right the internal so it is a mental manipulation let's say I'm here and suddenly there is a snake coming here okay forget math and IT you have to run around because there is a deadly snake here right now you react you think and then there is a reaction that is taking place. So what is happening in thinking is through our physical experience by touch or by smelling or by taste or by seeing or by hearing, right? We get lot of experience and then they are all mentally manipulated and that is what is called thinking, right? It's a mental activity. You develop some kind of a model Snake means dangerous and then you react accordingly. For example, now you, you can think of some beautiful cine song which you heard five years back. Everything, the voice, how, does, how is it stored in your mind? You have no idea, right? In what form it is there, you have no idea. But there is a representation that is available well inside you. That is because if your friend sings and then if he misses a word or if he misses a beat, no, no, that is wrong, you say. How do you say that? And also you say that this voice is very similar to that voice. Where is that voice now that you heard five years back? How is it done here? We have no idea. But there is a mental model of every experience that you have been is uh, taking place and it is very much within you. Now what happens is when you want to communicate this mental model to a, another person, that is where something ingenious human beings have to do. Why? You can get anything to your mind only through your nose, eyes and so on, skin, whatever is the senses you have, percept. Only through those sensors you can get the input. I have something in my mind. How do I put that to you? Let's go back to a cave day, caveman's day where there is no Hindi, Tamil, Telugu, no language fight, okay? Nothing is there and then we are all cavemen, okay? Let's say you go outside the cave and you saw three lines and then you have come back. Now your friend is about to go, now you want to warn. Of course, if both of you know English, you will say, hey, there are three lines, don't go. You will be killed. Now, no language, nothing. But how will you alert? How will you alert your Friend, don't go there, there are three lines. Now you have to communicate this idea. It is there in your mind. You have seen physically, you have an experience, now you want to communicate. How do you do that? Show your huh? Show your fear. Through? Show your fear. Like Show? Yes, yes, something. You can do a gesture, you can do something. All of you might have played dumb charades, right? Construct a word. Your partner should uh, uh, construct a word. Okay. Footprint in the sand of time. Footprint. That you do something and then somehow you convey that and that person has to construct the word. So the basically, there is something in my mind which I want to communicate to you. Right. Unless I am Ramakrishna Paramahamsa, you are a Vekananda by a kind of a touch. <laughs> Everything in my mind I can and you will realize God and we are all not like that. So what is needed here is a physical representation. So there is something in my mind I have to somehow physically represent. I can do gestures, I can do, I can roar, I can do something. But suppose you are blind, then gestures won't help. Roaring may help. Okay? It all depends on in what form you can absorb whatever that I want to communicate. So I have to represent accordingly. Therefore, the human beings were trying to find out a way to represent Okay, so there is something that has physically happened and your mind has acquired that experience, that is information. Information is a mental acquisition. 
the mental acquisition for an individual through his physical experiences. Anything that your mind has got is information. However, if that information is to be communicated to somebody else, you have to get a physical representation because he can get information only through his eyes, nose, tongue and so on. That's the only way he can get that information. Right? I need a way to represent. And this representation is the way in which we really thought about it. And then for our own thinking, we want to give a representation. This act is called abstraction. So, thinking and this led to abstraction. So, the abstraction is the art of focusing essential thing and ignoring irrelevant details. So, you want to say three lines. Therefore, what you have done is that line like roared and other things. Okay, you didn't bring physically the line and showed to him. You are representing that line. Now, one speck with the two circle and a thing, Mahatma Gandhi. You can see that the power of abstraction and then how much information it can convey and then this abstraction is very helpful. So they want to evolve symbols. Chinese have evolved in symbol in some way. Tamils have done some way. Everybody has got a way to represent that object line. L-I-O-N in Tamil, Si-Ing-A-Im in, uh, L -I -O -N in English, Singam in Tamil and so on. Simham in Telugu, whatever it is. So the point is, there were several ways of representing that object, but then we need a physical representation. That is called the abstraction. Because it is not the original object, it is a representation of that. So they have used roaring, they have used various uh, uh, gestures and other things, they know that it is very weak representation. So in order to get a stronger representation, they started with symbolic representation. That is the beautiful path, that is where language and everything has started. Symbolic representation. Once we had the symbolic representation, people understood that you can use any symbol. That object line, you can represent it L-I-O-N. Why? Why it is called line? There is no specific reason. Some great grandfather decided that as to be called as line, so it is being done even now by convention and by agreement. That is all. Okay. Now, when a line's picture is shown to a kid, and if the kid says cat, say no, wrong. Right? You object seriously because you want to arrive at a common ground. Had your great grandfather named it as C-A-T, and if that picture is shown, and if the kid says line, this is not line, this is C A T cat. How many times I have told you and all, you would yell at the kid. The point is how you label it, how you symbolically represent it, doesn't matter. But then there is something else that you wanted to tell your friend. There are three lines. How did you say three? Put out a finger. Right? Immediately. Now you are creating another concept called the quantity. There is an object and there is multiplicity of it. Now this is something different. Three. And little later you realize that three lines plus two lines is five lines. Three tables plus two tables is five tables. Two mangoes plus three mangoes is five mangoes. So it is not depending on that. It is completely different. In other words, these symbols are related. There is no relation between cat and line and you can represent it in any way. It really doesn't matter. But when it comes to this quantity which you are attempting to represent, there is a relation. 3 plus 2 is 5. So whatever you denoted as 5, right? Suppose this is what I use as 5 and whatever you denote as 2, Okay, this is 2 and whatever you denote as 3, this is a 3 and then you now get this relation because this is the way the quantities are related among themselves because from 5 when 2 goes away, 3 remains. So 5 minus 2 is 3, now they are related. Therefore, you are now getting a collection of symbols which are related in some way. Okay, and those relations are called operations. And the collection of symbols together with the set of operations which is first created on the integer. That is the reason why they say God has created an integer. Okay. And now you have a collection of symbols and then some operations defined on it. 
and that is what IT people call as abstract data type. Abstract data type is a collection of symbols together with set of operation. God has created the first abstract data type for information technology for 21st century. Okay, so it is not just integer. So from there it expanded. Okay, you expand them into various real numbers and the complex numbers, and then you create a mathematical world. You create a set of symbols and you define operations on them and different operations are done in a different way. Okay? So mathematical objects with the properties are created and then they are all analyzed. Okay? You take a point. Point is represented by a pair of real numbers in a coordinate system. Take a complex numbers. Complex numbers are also a pair of real numbers. One is real part, another is imaginary part. Now, complex numbers can be multiplied. Can you multiply points? Complex numbers can be divided. What do you mean by divide one point by another? It doesn't make sense. So I have a pair of real numbers, but when it is representing a point, you do different kind of operations. When it is representing complex numbers, you do different kind of operations. Objects are same, operations are different, properties are different. And so mathematicians are interested in, if I have a collection of properties with certain operations, what are all the things that it possesses? What kind of properties that it will have? What is possible? What is impossible? Okay, I have created a geometric world. I have operations on them, ruler and compass. With ruler you can draw a straight line, with compass you can draw the arc of any radius. With this, is it possible for you to bisect Yes, it is possible for me to bisect because I can take like this, take it up, mark it and mark it and bisecting an angle is possible. Is trisecting an angle possible? I give you the same gadget. Will you be able to trisect an angle? It is impossible. Let me cut the story short. It is impossible to trisect an angle. Okay, people know that it is the case, the formal proof evolved after 2000 years and then in, you have a beautiful explanation, mathematics in Galois field and then finite fields and then you can't even imagine that the answer for this question is in completely a different domain altogether. The point is, here I have a new mathematical system with new operations, what is possible, what is impossible, all of them were discussed. So, people were trying to find the properties. This is called algebraic system. Development of an algebraic system. Algebraic system evolved from our basic common sense experience and their representation in symbolically. So, from a symbolic system, you evolved to an algebraic system. From symbolic system, languages evolved and that went on to syntax, semantics, grammar. That is another way in which the symbolic representation proceeded. The another way in which the symbolic representation proceeded was through this kind of algebraic system. This algebraic system have this abstract data type, a mathematical model and operations on them and various questions you would answer. Okay, so basically what is happening is whatever you call it as information is nothing but a representation. It is an algebraic system. You are putting that into an algebraic system. Then only you can define operation, then only you can do various problem solving or questions related to it. Time, abstract idea. Time, you can't even define. You exist, you know intuitively past, future, but then I can't handle all these things. I need a representation. So I create a calendar, day, day, month, everything. So I establish convention. Now I can ask the question, what is 1, 1, 3000? Is it a Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday? How do I solve it? Now I have a completely different mathematical system. In this mathematical system, 1 may represent Monday, 2 may represent Tuesday, 4 may represent Thursday. 4 by 2 in integer is okay. Thursday by Tuesday doesn't make sense. So here I have to manipulate this 2 and 4 in a different way. It's all fine. But the important point is, now I have a new mathematical system, new rules of the game. It is an algebraic system. In this, I do the algebra according to the rules of operations and get the answers done. So what we were trying to do is, on the top of abstraction,
We were trying to discover the properties of the algebraic system. The mathematics has expanded itself by developing lot of theorems, facts, proofs, possibilities, impossibilities, conjectures, open problems and so on. So it is abstraction plus uh, assertion. Assertions are the thing that you want to prove as false or true and so on. So property discovery. Mathematics has spent enormous amount of energy. 2000 years of mathematics has given voluminous amount of facts and other things. Okay. Fantastic thing has been done. Now, lot of information has been represented. Lot of information's properties have been discovered. Okay. This is true. This exists. That exists. This is possible. This is impossible. Everything was done. Now real world problem solving. When you want to solve the problem in real world, what you need is a concrete answer. Your solution exists. It's not satisfactory. Right? It is not at all satisfactory. You all know Rolle's theorem, mean value theorem. Given a function f, continuous differentiable, there is a theta such that f dash of theta equal to f of b minus f of a by b minus a. Everything you know. Right? Very nice theorem. Maclerian series proof, you are convinced that it exists. If I give you f of x equal to x cube plus 4x plus 7 and the interval 743, will you be able to find theta? I want that theta. Can you find it? You are not able to find it after the proof. Mathematics has done lot of things in assertion, in the logical truth, validity, properties, possibilities, impossibilities, everything it addressed. Okay? But what? it was trying to address when you solve a problem in the real world is it has to be done in terms of concrete explicitly computable step and that is called computational thinking okay first you have thinking then you have abstract thinking then you have mathematical thinking and from mathematical thinking when you are using this real world entities, properties, and you want to solve the problem in the real world. And that required what is known as computational thinking. And computational thinking means it is not only simply validity of the thing or properties or something like that. In addition to the abstraction and assertion, you need action. Explicitly computable steps. Okay, I have a differential equation. Its a solution is very important for me to decide the angle in which I want to throw some missile so that it goes all the way up to moon. How do I do that? Okay, I need to solve that equation. A solution exists. It is possible to find. It is in this range, and I give minus infinity to plus infinity. How does it matter? You can't use it. Okay, and in the real world, people started using for barter system for variety of these things you have to do mathematics represent the element and so on every information is to be represented the information representation okay has its ground completely in mathematics therefore mathematics for IT is in some sense a very wrong title that is because IT is mathematics so what I am actually going to talk is mathematics is for mathematics that's exactly the kind of a thing we have come to do that okay so mathematics is the starting language it is the way in which the information the very notion of information itself the moment you want to represent and manipulate process communicate do anything with that first thing that you do is mathematics and that is where the abstract representation begins and once that abstract representation begins you do the action therefore from the thinking to mathematical thinking to computational thinking when you proceeded something different has happened if you look at the proof and mathematical assertions and other things they are all static objects computation is on the other hand dynamic in nature there is a value that is manipulated new values are obtained using that something is derived and so on so there is something dynamic about it 
right? How do I capture the dynamics of the computation? So this is where computer science has given the first very powerful return toast to mathematics. Okay? When mathematics has done so much to it, what computer science has done for mathematics is that here, if you want to handle the computation, if you want to capture the notion of what do you mean by computation, right? Think of that as a state. The dynamics of it, what do you mean by dynamic? Something that changes. Static is that doesn't change. It is not something fixed. It is not something that has been simply reasoned out. You have to perform operation, algebraic system, operation, changes, values, everything. So there is sequence of thing changes. How do I capture that? I take the snapshot of that. So state is a snapshot of the configuration of the dynamic system. And that notion of the state and notion of state transition, which is very fundamental, is now absorbed by mathematics. And now they look at in the following way. In computational thinking, what we do is that we start with some input and then mathematics will carefully now reason out how do I do this trace transition? Is it possible? Now the same question I ask, is it possible to do this many operations and then get the job done? How many operations I need to do to get the job done? All of them we are now trying to look at. That is because the mathematics itself is now taken a different root altogether because it is now refining the notion of computational thinking. Input state, initial state, processing alters the state. So you, the system goes through a series of states and then terminal output which is a final state. This state transition, how do I handle? If you look at the traditional systems of groups, rings, fields, vector spaces, abstract algebra or any of those things, this concept was not there. Right? They were all looking at the properties. They are not looking into a process and the effect of it and the intermediate values and other things. This is the return toast given by IT to mathematics. Now mathematicians are looking at, did I say mathematicians? Well, computer scientists are looking in the following way. What they are doing is, right, look at the states and then now if you want to know whether a large software is valid or not. How do I do that? I create assertion at every intermediate state. The properties of the states are carefully followed up. The cumulative fact is used and finally I prove that yes, the output what you got is indeed what you want to do. Whether you are doing it using a very vague premises and then whether you do it by learning and iterating in machine learning or whether you are doing it simply as the correctness or validity of a program using a propositional calculus, it doesn't matter. What you are doing is basically observing the state, looking into the state transition and then walking it through and then building the logic along with that so that you have an intimate understanding of the computational process because it is that computational process that is in the heart of information technology. IT is solutions. What is the difference between computer science and IT? Often as a faculty in IIT, I used to get this question. My normal answer is that it is about uh, 1 lakh in the capitation fee. For computer science, you have to pay 4 lakhs and for information technology, maybe 3 lakhs. So the, uh, the problem is people really don't understand what exactly is the essential difference. One is focusing on the systems and the properties of the systems and it is very close to this. IT on the other hand is considering the problems, the solutions, connection with the real world and then interfacing with this. Therefore, IT means the physical ways and means of problem solving and taking the solution to the society or to the real world. Since problem solving is at the core, the methodology, the very word called problem itself is coming from mathematics. That is the reason why the richness of the mathematics is uh, directly contributing for this. And now, another return toast for that yet another return toast has happened. The moment you are trying to solve certain problem physically, using physical resources, there is something engineering about it arises. If you look at the fundamental dictums of engineering, right? It is functionality. First of all, it is supposed to perform certain thing. 
okay and the second most important thing is optimality the resources that you consume must be optimally utilized i have a mobile phone discovered it's beautiful you can carry it from anywhere to anywhere except that it weighs one and a half kilogram can't you carry one and a half kilogram you can physically it's a theoretically it's a good solution but then you don't like it a very sleek 90 gram gadget which also has camera now you don't know whether what you have is a camera with which you speak or a mobile phone in which you click pictures right so additional functionality and so on so you have functionality optimality physically when you are trying to solve a problem therefore once you have a computational thinking brought into picture the next natural question is i am using this computational process implement it i may have a special purpose chip or a hardware or i may have a solution that is implemented okay and then deployed in the real world for solving problem there will be somebody some software that is monitoring the bandwidth and then somebody says that the i'll give you 2 mb line and then it gives only few kilobytes you complain he looks into the problem that is generated traffic congestion analysis mathematics read as the algorithm and if it improves you are happy the whole point is everything in the real world has got a mathematical representation it is a mathematical problem and its solution is what is hidden there and what is very important now is its efficient performance how do i efficiently solve i may know how to solve it mathematicians are happy the moment they discover a solution all of us know determinants right you have an n by n determinant and then uh, in order to solve the determinant uh, you expand by the first row hide that one and this column and expand with this and i have done this uh, four by four determinant evaluation in my school days no two evaluation gave the same answer right <laughs> no two evaluation gave the same answer I could never check for the correctness of my determinant answer because the second time when I do I get a different answer right I knew why it all happened because the complexity is factorial n naturally a school boy is thrown off with factorial 4 computation and that is what has happened but that is the definition given by mathematicians beautiful definition constructive explicitly computable step computational thinking is well reflected on this well defined the process everything is in place what is missing there is an efficient way of doing it in fact if you take a 20 by 20 matrix and try to do the determinant evaluation in the traditional way 20 factorial multiplication if you want to do right a back of the envelope calculation will show that it will take more than 10000 years even by the fastest supercomputer that means that is not the way we have to now focus on the process it is not only that state transition it is the process in which you are taking it through is also as vital as the input output transition and so on so the computer science raised the following fundamental question you are saying that the problem can be solved now my important question is how well it can be solved initially the questions were all on whether it can be solved or not solvability of a problem later on the question turned into how well when i can solve a problem how well i can solve this the notion of np completeness and other things have created a huge impact in the mathematical world the completely new different kind of a thinking has emerged and because certain problems are really really hard people even abandoned the way of solving the problem exactly in mathematics sense antithesis to math they are using mathematics to do something what math would not like to do in math you want everything the perfect answer now it's okay there may be some error is acceptable for me as long as i could do it well and even if i am not getting the best that is okay if i get something near that is good enough approximation algorithms randomized algorithms algorithms with error computation with error everything is acceptable but now mathematicians require a completely new way of thinking okay totally new way of thinking is needed that is because these are all triggered from the practical world now mathematics is giving the answer for this now mathematics is again answering for it earlier mathematics gave the language mathematics gave the basis mathematics gave the notation it gave abstract data type it gave everything that you need to start it started 
but when it proceeded it experienced practical difficulty again that bounds to mathematics mathematics now is responding back okay so in it world see there is one uh, very nice uh, my, my friend and uh, dearest friend and colleague asish she is teaching cryptography and uh, uh, adi shamir used to say a very nice joke about uh, uh, cryptography so one fellow has uh, 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 created uh, some kind of an unbreakable uh, glass or something like that and then he was uh, demonstrating that this is an unbreakable glass and by hitting the hammer unbreakable glass and unbreakable in one of the occasions it broke okay it doesn't matter hammer hammer and hammer he said so what happens is you design a crypto system claim that it is uh, strong uh, when you the, you publish a paper saying that it is strong and then somebody attacks that attack also becomes another paper therefore what happens is the uh, both uh, the robber and uh, this game continues in other words what is happening is in the mathematical world new ideas are generated to overcome certain limitations if certain things are impossible how to make it possible okay and what is the intrinsic difficulty of a problem the intrinsic difficulty of problem has become a major concern of it industry one of the major concern of the it industry is the intrinsic difficulty of a problem whether it is big data or machine learning or cryptography or social network anything when you take when the problem of scale comes the intrinsic difficulty therefore the mathematicians are now challenged with the questions on intrinsic difficulty now you comment on that so the linear algebra okay which was looking at the lattices etc in the real number coefficient and other thing suddenly started looking into integer coefficients and then the world of post quantum cryptography is created it is just the linear algebra but the way in which things were done for the post quantum cryptography okay is phenomenal because of the arrival of a new technology or a potential arrival of a new technology which can break the existing cryptographic systems people would like to design certain thing which has intrinsic difficulty that cannot be beaten by such a development in the technology again mathematics comes to the rescue math what it does now is that hey i have been looking at linear algebra in one flavor but now just look at the linear algebra on lattices now the whole world of opportunities challenges solutions pioneering progresses and whatever was considered impossible area was done and lot of real world problems are getting solved significant progress in information technology in a particular knowledge domain is happening lattice based cryptography is one of the trendiest of all research areas uh, now same thing is happening with respect to the graph theory when you have a small graph whose entire matrix can be represented in a single dabba you can write uh, dijkstra's shortest path algorithm you can go from one node to another node everything you can do with a simple program you have internet the number of nodes you do not know who is now who is not there you do not know everyone knows their neighborhood information therefore the entire graph's representation is not available when nothing of that kind is available how are you going to solve a problem on the entire graph with only local information completely different strategy new way of computational thinking is needed it posted the problem to mathematics mathematics responded with newer strategies for solving all these things okay so in this way because information technology is essentially mathematical problem solving because information is nothing but an abstract mental acquisition any problem that you want to solve is to be symbolically mathematically represented in an algebraic system any problem solving effort whatever is the it domain that you are looking for turns out to be a raw math problem solving when the raw math problem solving is involved you start from the abstraction and then you go with the properties get to know what are the things that can be done what it cannot be done you go through the assertion and after the assertion think in a computational way that is action and finally optimization this is the fourth stage and this is algorithmic thinking optimization okay so the 
connection between these two areas are very intimate. You really do not know, much like in your mobile phone, whether it is a phone in which you take a picture or the camera with which you are talking, you have no idea whether it is the mathematics that has been triggering the progress in information technology or the challenges in information technology is exciting mathematical minds to do something new, adding dimension to mathematics, color to the mathematics, excitement to the mathematics and bring it back to the real world. And that is what is happening. Therefore, IT is for mathematics, mathematics is for IT, IT is mathematics, mathematics is IT. Thank you very much. I stop at this point. <laughs>